Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Paying YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving lead code problem 426, convert binary search tree to sorted doubly linked list. Before we read the question prompt, I would just like to kindly ask you to subscribe to my channel. I have the goal of reaching 1000 subscribers by the end of May and I need your help to get there. With more subscribers, I can make more videos and help you get those jobs in paying you need. So definitely do subscribe and you will thank me later. So let's read the question prompt. Convert a binary search tree to a sorted doubly circular doubly linked list in place. You can think of the left and right pointers as synonymous to the predecessor and successor pointers in a doubly linked list. For a circular doubly linked list, the predecessor of the first element is the last element, and the successor of the last element is the first element. We want to do the transformation in place. After the transformation, the left pointer of the tree should point to the predecessor, and the right pointer should point to its successor. You should return the pointer to the smallest element in the linked list. So if we can see this tree here, 4, 2, 5, 1, 3, we should return 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the 1 will be linked to the 5, and the 5 will be linked to the 1. So before we jump into how to solve this problem the way they ask us to, I think that if you get this question in an interview and you don't know how to do it in place, um, I think off the bat your interviewer might not ask you to do it in place. So the simplest way to do this is just to do an in-order traversal of our binary search tree, which if you remember, an in-order traversal of a binary search tree will always give you the elements in sorted order. So what you could do then is, you know, you would get the list back as one, two, three, four, five, and then you could use a for loop to basically just link each one, um, you know, to its predecessor and do that linking. Uh, and that way you could do it, you know, simply. Uh, and then you wouldn't have to worry about, you know, doing it in place. If you don't recall the algorithm or you don't know it off the bat, this is a good starting point. You know, you're still going to be able to achieve big O of N runtime and you're going to need big O of N space for the actual um, storing of those nodes. So this is a good starting point, but the problem does ask us to do it in place. So let's think about how we might do this because it is a little bit more complicated, although it is pretty intuitive. So how do we do it? Okay. So remember that we need to do this problem in place, which means that we can't just parse the tree uh, to start with and get all the nodes and then do the linking manually. We need to do it somehow as we're traversing the tree. So we know that an in-order traversal of a binary tree will give us the elements in sorted order, which also means that the path that we're gonna take through the tree is also going to be in sorted order. So for example, if we started to this root, our BST traversal would take us to this two, then it would take us to this one, which would then bounce to the two, then go to the three, come back to the two, go to the four, then the five. So we know that the order that will go in this tree is actually going to be the in order traversal, which means that we're going to visit the elements in sorted order. So what we need to do is while we're traversing this tree in an in order manner, we need to do the linking. And to do the linking, we're going to have to keep track of the previous element that we've seen. So that way, for example, you know, when we're at a two, what we can do is we can say, okay, what was the last element we're at? So that means that two's left pointer will now equal to this one. And we can set one's right pointer equal to the two. Similarly, when we get to the three, we can say, you know, its left pointer is going to go back to the two. Uh, and then, sorry, the two's right pointer will be the three. And then three's left pointer will be the this two here and we're going to do that through the tree so we're going to need some variable to keep track of our last element and we're going to need two extra variables we're going to need a variable to keep track of the first element in our tree because remember this is what we're going to need to return right we need to keep track of it because we need to return the smallest element and we need to know what that is and we're also going to need to know what the last element is so that way, when we do our traversal, the last thing we need to do is actually link the smallest element with the largest element. And we need that, we need to have the first and the last uh, elements available to us at all times. Otherwise, we can't do that process, right? We wouldn't know what to return at the end. Um, when the traversal finishes, the node that we're currently going to be working with is the last node. But if we don't track the first node, we'll never be able to link it. And we also have to return the first element. So we need to keep that in mind. So the algorithm that we want to take here is quite simple. What we're going to do is we're going to initialize our variables. So we'll call f equal to the first. And in the beginning, it's going to equal none because we haven't seen it. And then our last, we'll call it l, is going to equal to none. 
and what we want to do is we want to perform the in order linking so what is the in order linking going to be well remember that for an in order traversal if we have a node that's non-null as our current node then we want to go as far left as possible into that binary search tree because that's going to be finding the smallest element so we're going to start at the root and we're going to say does the root exist it does so what we need to do is recursively call our in order function on the left tree of this four so that means that we're going to end up at this two and then from there we're going to say okay does the two exist it does so that means we need to go into its left subtree and continue right so now we're at this one and this one exists so we're going to try to go into its left subtree but we see that it doesn't exist so what's going to end up happening is that we're going to bounce back we're going to try to go to its left but it doesn't exist so we're going to end up back at the one now what we need to do is we need to start linking things so we need to check okay what was the last element we visited so that way we can make the links in this case the last element is actually none which means that if we haven't seen an element so far, it means that this is actually the smallest element in the tree. So therefore we should be setting our first equal to this one. So that means that this none will get overwritten and now it's a one. And uh, now what we wanna do is, okay, we've fully processed this one. And what we wanna do now is we want to essentially set our last to be one, because this is also the last element that we've seen. And then we're going to try to go into its right subtree and process. But obviously there's nothing there. So we just bounce back to the one. Now this has fully processed its left. We've fully processed the element and we've done its right. Because remember that in an in order traversal, it's left, node, and then right. So we first went to the left. We saw that nothing was there. We did you know, our logic here for the actual node itself. And then we tried to go into its right subtree, but nothing was there. So that means that now we can return up back to our two. So we fully explored its left subtree. Now we need to do our linking again. So this time we have seen a last element, which means that two is not the first element. So there's nothing that we need to do there. Now what we need to do is link the two and the one. So we're gonna say that the last element we've seen, which was this one, its right pointer, which means that you know the next element in this linked list, so basically the next element larger than it, will be equal to our current node. So you know our one is gonna now have a right pointer pointing at the two and then we do the opposite for two two's left pointer is going to be equal to the one and now what we want to do is the last element that we've seen is this two so we update that and let's just kind of clear some things here and okay so the last element we've seen is two now we need to go into two's left subtree because remember it's an in order traversal so we go left node and then right so we go into its right subtree which does exist so, you know, remember that when we get to a node, we want to go as left as possible. So we try going left, but obviously there's nothing there. So we just bounce back to the three. Now it's time to process the three itself. So again, we need to do the linking. So we're going to say now two's right pointer is going to be pointing to this three. And then three's right uh, left pointer is going to be pointing to the two. <clears throat> so what we can do is link them. And now the last element we've seen is three. And actually, let me just erase some things here to make it clearer. So the last element we've now seen is three. And now we need to go into three's right subtree to try to process it. But obviously, there's nothing there. So we end up just bouncing back to the two. Now, two has processed its left subtree itself and its right subtree. So that means that we can return back to the four. And now we can do the link again. So <clears throat> we now need to process the four. So we can say, you know, what was the last element we've seen? It's this node three. So that means that four's uh, left pointer is going to point to this three, and then three's right pointer is going to point to this four, and we're going to set that. And now the last element we've processed, let me just erase to make it clearer. Now the last element we've processed is this four. Now we've gone fully into uh, four's left subtree, and we've gone fully in, uh, sorry, we processed the four as well, and now we just need to go into its right subtree. So we go into this five and then at the five, remember, we try to go as far left as possible. So we go into its left subtree. It doesn't exist. So now it's time to process the five itself. So again, we're going to link four's right to be this node five and then five's left to be this uh, node four here. And then what we need to do is, OK, the last node that we've seen is now five. Then we're going to go into four, uh, five's left subtree and or sorry, right subtree and it doesn't exist. So we end up back at the five. And now we've processed both its left 
it's the node itself and it's right. So that means we bubble back to the four. And now we've processed four's left subtree, the node four itself and its right subtree. So that means that our, you know, recursion is going to end and our in order link is actually done. So at this point, we will exit our in order linking function with, uh, you know, our node first being equal to, you know, the node one and our node last being equal to five. <clears throat> and in between all of the nodes have been linked by setting their, you know, left and right properties to the nodes as we went along. And I showed you in the diagram. Now, remember that we need to link, right? We need to link the first element with the last element and vice versa. So we're going to say, you know, one's left pointer is sorry, one's right. Yeah, left pointer is going to equal to the five and five's um, right pointer is going to equal to the one. So we're going to set those. And now we have fully linked our linked list and, and it's also circular. And remember that the problem asks for us to simply return or does it say uh, return the pointer to the smallest element in the linked list, which remember is this first element because it's going to be the smallest one and the most far left. So all we have to do is return this node one, which you can see is, you know, the head of our linked list here. And that's what we would return. And remember, the linked list is going to be one, two, three, four, five, where each element is, you know, linked. And then we have that circular relationship between these two. So that's how you do it conceptually. Uh, we're basically just going to be doing an in order traversal of this tree. Uh, recursively and we just need to set the left and right pointers as we go so hopefully that makes sense I think the diagram is pretty intuitive how we want to do this implementing it is a little bit tricky but once we go to the code editor I'll walk you through it line by line and it should become crystal clear this is one of my favorite problems I know how to explain it really well so hopefully uh, any kind of confusion you have at the drawing board stage uh, will be cleared up now that we go to the code editor so I will see you there we're in the code editor it's time to write the code so the first thing that we want to do is actually check whether or not we were given a binary search tree in the first place. If we weren't given one, then there's nothing for us to convert and we should just return an empty linked list. So we're going to say if not root, then we can simply return none. Cool. Remember that we're going to need to keep track of the first element in our sorted linked list and the last element so we can link them together once our in order linking function actually runs. So let's define those variables. So we're going to say for self dot first is going to be equal to none self dot last is going to be equal to none. And now what we want to do is remember, we want to call our in order link function, right? So we're going to call in order whoop, in order link and we're going to call it on the root provided to us. Now what we want to do once this runs, we'll have linked every single node in the linked uh, in our binary search tree and made it into a linked list except for the first and the last. So we need to link those. So we'll say first self dot first dot left is going to be equal to self dot last and then self dot uh, last dot right is going to equal to self dot first. So now we've linked the tree, we've made it circular. Sorry, we've linked the linked list and we've made it circular. Now remember what we need to do is simply return the pointer to the smallest element in the linked list, which will be that first node. So we'll say return self dot first. And that's how you do the, you know, the main function here, but we still need to uh, write out this in order link function. So let's do that now. So we'll say def um, in order link self and we're going to take a node. So remember that when doing an in order traversal of a tree, if the node exists that we're currently processing, we want to go as far left as possible, then process the current node, then it's right subtree. So we're going to say if node. So basically, if we have a non null node, we want to call our in order link function recursively to go as far left as possible. So we're going to say self dot in order link on the node dot left. Now what we want to do is we want to perform the linking. So we need to check whether or not we've actually seen an element before or we're at the leftmost, um, you know, node in our tree, which is going to be that first element. And we need to make note of it because we need it to basically set things at the end and also to return it. So once, you know, this in order link function goes, basically we'll be at the very last point of our tree. You know, we'll try to go into its left subtree, but obviously it doesn't exist. So that means that we'll end up at the smallest one. So when this in order link function returns, and now we have to do the linking, we're going to say if not self dot last. So basically if we haven't seen an element, but we've now returned from our in order link function, that means that our current node must be the first node. So we're going to say self dot first equals to none. Oops, sorry, none. Uh, node 
otherwise that means that we have seen nodes before so that means we just simply need to link the left and the right subtrees so that means that if we've seen a node before that means that its value is smaller than our current node remember it's an in order traversal and we will have the node that we visited before will always be smaller than the node that we're currently at so what we want to do is we want to say node.left is going to equal to self.last so whatever the last node we visited was and we want to say self.last.right is going to be equal to our current node so we're going to update those pointers and now what we need to do is we need to update what the self.last value to be whatever our current node is because we have now processed that node and then we can go on to the next one who will then need to do the linking and on and on and on so we set that value and now remember that in an in order traversal we do the left subtree we process the current node and then we go into the right subtree so we've already processed the left subtree this portion processes the node itself and then what we need to do now is go into the right subtree so we're going to say self dot in order link link and we're going to pass in node dot node dot right and that will go into its right subtree and we're going to repeat this process on and on and on so let's submit this make sure that it works and it does excellent so what is the time and space complexity of our algorithm well the time complexity here is going to be big o of n why is it big o of n well we need to basically touch every single node in our binary search tree and perform the linking so since we're touching every single node in the tree this is going to be a you know linear solution because it just depends on how big the tree is so what is the space complexity well if the tree was balanced we could say that the space complexity would be log n because you know in a binary search tree that's the size of the recursion stack when you're performing a recursive search through an in order uh, sorry in order when you're performing an in order traversal of a balanced binary search tree it's going to be log n but in the worst case our tree is not going to be balanced which means that we're going to have a big o of n recursive stack to actually hold our um you know recursion here so it's going to be big o of n um since we need to count the recursion um stack frames but we're not actually using any extra space here um which is what the problem asks us to do to basically do it in place we're modifying each of the nodes uh in place and we're just accounting for the fact that we have um recursive stack frames that we need to count your interviewer may not want to count this in which case it could be a constant space solution but um you know you do want to typically talk about that recursion isn't free you know there are stack frames and technically this is a space um you know allocation so it's good to talk about those so that's how you solve this problem like i said it's one of my favorite problems i really like tree and graph problems and this one's really cool um so yeah if you enjoyed this video please leave a like comment and subscribe to my channel if there's any videos or topics you'd like me to make content on please just leave it in the comment section below and I'll be happy to get back to you. Just let me know what you want to see and I'll do that for you guys. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.